Hello my lovelies, it's Trina Saint Gourmand. Welcome back to my channel. I am your frag and bag hag. Today I have a reveal of a new bag I purchased recently and I'm loving, absolutely loving, no regrets in buying it retail for once instead of on the resale market. And before I do that, I want to share with you some goodies that I procured for myself over the holidays. And first, mm. this is something that I might have mentioned that I would do, and it's the repurchase of the Moschino Boy toy. Came in this little box here. This, you guys, is a good perfume for the cost. I think this was Ichiman Yen, uh, 10,000 yen, which I, like with the exchange right now into American dollars, it's crazy, so I'm not gonna go there. I paid 10,000 Japanese yen for this, which is, I guess, standard price in Japan for a 100 ml designer. Like, you know, it's not a high-end bottle of, of juice, but this stuff is lovely. It projects and it lasts, and I'm in love with it. So this is one of the keepers on my shelf now. And it's kind of, you know, kitsch to have a black bear on your shelf, I guess. And next, I took a little foray into the world of Jeffree Star. Love him or hate him, I have tried some of his um, makeup products and I do like them a bit. First thing I did was get three of these velvet bullets. These are lipsticks. I'm wearing one of them now. I think it's called Designer Blood. And all of these are matte shades. And matte shades are good, but unfortunately they're very drying for my lips. And they're really hard for me to smooth out properly. I think sometimes they can over exacerbate my fine lines. So I think I pre prefer for someone my age, I'm in my 50s to have something more frosty, not like a um, creamy lipstick, but not like a matte either. A frost is good because then it it's more forgiving on the fine lines, you know? But I got uh, Androgyny, which is I think the one I like best, and then these two red shades that are very dark, Blood of My Emonies and Bl uh, Designer Blood. I love the colors, but they're a bit harsh on me. So if I put a gloss over them, something to soften it, it's a lot better, but they're not bad. They're not bad, but drying. So if you have dry skin, I, I wouldn't recommend this. The other thing I got was this Jawbreaker palette. I don't know if anybody's uh, watching this into this stuff, but it's a very colorful uh, eye palette. I love eye makeup and uh, I'll give a close up of this, but as you can see, it's these are wow colors and there's a lot of mattes in here, which is one reason I'm interested in it. And surprisingly, despite this, these crazy colors, a lot of them are pretty wearable. I mean, I knew there would be some in here that I wouldn't wear, like that licorice color and delicious because I don't like navy very much. But surprisingly, and what is really good, orange juice, and believe it or not, cute, and the F word over here is very nice. So quite pleased with that purchase. And it was $12 US, which is, you know, pretty good. But when you convert it to Japanese and uh, these days, it's not very cheap at all. And last, I picked up with that the um, Jeffree Star classic mirror in this psychedelic print. And to be honest, I think this is gonna go nicely on my wall. Perhaps I'll give you a screenshot of what that looks like now. It's a little bit girly, but it's kind of fun. And then I can just grab it off the wall when I need it. So I'm very happy with that. Yes, yeah, so here she is, the beautiful Opportunity Tote from Furla in the L size, which is 39 centimeters wide from Furla. And I don't remember off the top of my head the name of this design, but I'll put it up here somewhere. The designer, it's always one of those collaboration things with Furla. One thing that Furla is good at with designs is having these opposite images, like birds facing each other or patterns, and I think it looks really good. I don't know if it's the same designer that does that or a whole bunch of different ones and Furla puts its spin on it by having opposite prints, but I really like it. And I really love the color story of this bag. I really like olive color and little punches of teal and an orangey sort of pink. 
salmon maybe. I think it looks great, it matches a lot of my stuff. So very happy with this choice. And uh, I'm gonna basically to go over the features of this bag, I think I'm gonna compare it to the infamous Christian Jor book tote in the L size, which is presumably what this design is based on. There are certainly a lot of designers copying Dior's uh, book tote. It's become pretty popular. But I don't want to spend several thousand dollars on a bag, so I looked for other options and that's how I discovered this. And for the first time ever, this bag was purchased retail for me. Normally I buy things, as you know, from the secondhand market, but this is a new bag. And also they were having a sale 40% off and this bag was my favorite among all the patterns that there were. So I decided, what the hell, it's Christmas, I'm gonna treat myself. Might regret that later when the um, <laughs> credit card comes in, but it was still relatively affordable, but not cheap for me anyway. And again, I think um, I'm gonna give you only Japanese prices. I think it was around Yonju, Yonman, so um, 40,000 yen, Japanese yen I paid for this. Yeah. Okay, so the features that make this bag to me better than the Dior book tote. Okay, first price, obviously. I mean, the Dior book tote is basically uh, another zero on the end of the price tag, isn't it? Around there. So that's not in my range. And even secondhand, nah, it's not for me. But that aside, there are some obvious other features that make it really amazing too. And first is the fact that it's got leather handles at the top to protect wear and tear at the hand. Also at the bottom of the bag, it's covered in leather. And I think there might be some leather accents in other places, or maybe not. But anyway, the two important places, the hands and the bottom are leather. So that protects the bag and also helps to give it some more permanence to the structure. And third is the feet at the bottom. This bag also contains five feet under the bag, which again protects the bag when you're placing it on the table or on the floor even, and also helps to keep it in a more structured boxy look, which I like for this bag. Importantly for me, number four, this bag contains D-rings on the side of the bag where you can attach a strap for a, a, like to carry it as a shoulder bag. And that's indeed what I have done here. Now, the bag does not come with a shoulder strap. You have to supply your own, but that's probably a good thing because then you have more flexibility. And it's, like I said, it's not a metal strap. So I was concerned at first over the fact that it's not metal. So I think with time, this might come loose. But most of the time, this is meant as a handheld bag. I just like having a strap in case it's heavy or I'm you know, walking around with it for a long time. Okay, the fifth reason why this is better than the Dior Book Tote is the fact that it is fully lined. I don't know what kind of material it is. Feels like a cotton polyester blend, but it's this particular model is black as well. Not always the best, but I'll probably use, uh, in fact, I am already using a uh, bag insert it doesn't really need structure, but it helps me organize my stuff inside of it. And it also helps to uh, push against papers that I keep on the side for work or a computer laptop. So having that lining just, it just looks more professional looking than just seeing the inside stitching, which is the case for the Dior book tote. Point number six is that it also has inside pockets. On one side, you have a zippered pocket and on the other side, there are two slip pockets. One uh, you can fit your phone into, and the other one maybe your travel card. It's perfectly designed, well thought out. The Furla symbol on the side uh, is also not completely sewn on to the whole of the bag. So if you have something you want to stand up vertically, for example, you could feasibly put it through there to keep it on the side. Or even maybe like a piece of clothing or a jacket or a scarf, you could have it against the side of the bag if you wanted. I didn't realize until today that it actually is only sewn in on uh, either side of the, um, the band. It's like a seat belt, the whole furla tag here. Okay, number seven is very personal. Um, this might not be the case for you, but for me it's a bonus, and that is the fact that there's no overt branding. Like the Dior tote book has this big Christian Dior right, right across the front, and then you can customize the other side if you want. But this one, it does have Furla written in here in little places, but it's not loud and obnoxious. I really am over that Logomania stuff. I don't think it's classy to have um, logos splitting all over the place. I love high-end luxury designer stuff, but more for the quality and the design 
than for the actual branding. I mean, sure, a little branding is nice, a little bit of flex there, but uh, it's, it's kind of kimochi wari also, which means feels ucky to me personally. Other people might be different. So I'm happy for that lack of overt branding. There is a big Furla inside though, if you wanna show that off. And Furla is a very underrated brand, I think. I did do a, a review on their Metropolis bag some time ago, I'll post it up here somewhere. I have since sold that bag because it turned out to be just too small for me, but uh, it's a good bag. And I think secondhand you can get them much cheaper. The prices are going up for Furla. Prices are going up everywhere. Okay, number eight, and this is the last point, is that this bag, because it's just that little bit smaller than the Dior book tote. I think the Dior book tote in the large size is 41, if I'm not mistaken, centimeters wide, whereas this one is 39. I don't know about the height. It's a little bit smaller in any case. And and to me, because I'm a big person, I don't think this bag looks big at all. I mean, it's like I'm in between a, a handbag and a briefcase. It can pass for either and it's much more attractive than carrying around the other option that I have and I've reviewed for you, which is this suitcase sort of thing from Le Mancio and I've reviewed that quite recently as well. This really does look like a travel work briefcase sort of arrangement, not a purse, but this one, you can get away with calling it a purse and because it does look so good and it's extremely lightweight, that's another bonus, I should put that at number nine technically, it's extremely lightweight, oh, but so is the, the book tote, and I'm making a comparison video, aren't I? So never mind. Anyway, it's small enough so that it looks like a handbag to me, and it's very chic and casual, but because it's so structured, it's also dressy. So when I carry this bag, I don't feel the need to put a, a purse inside to take out. I can just take the whole bag and maybe empty the stuff in it if I'm at work and I'm going out for lunch or something. Whereas with the other bag, I would not carry that around. It's not really becoming, I think. And this is what I was worried about when I bought it, is that it fits a 16 inch laptop. So my massive computer here actually fits snugly against the side of the um, bag. I haven't tried it with a like a foamy case on top. It might have to go diagonal in that case, I'm not sure, but at the end of the day, I end up carrying my um, computer. I have like a hard case, as you saw, on top of it to protect it a bit, and I just chuck it in there like that. Yes, so those are basically the points that I like about this bag and the eight reasons why I think it's better than the Dior book tote, and also in comparison to the Mancio tote, uh, this one is not as grab and go. It's a bit finicky with all the pockets, whereas this one, because it's an open bag, you just can chuck stuff in there and it's great. So I'll just tell you right away that what I have in here is one of these bag and bag arrangements and then I can organize all my stuff in there and everything I need is there. And it, I recommend these uh, for this bag. It's not necessary because there are some pockets in here. I can keep my all my files for work, A4 size, really snug against the side of the bag and the purse organizer keeps it all flush. It works great, same thing for the computer. So yeah, if you're doing that on a regular, then I do recommend a bag and bag. So that was the Furla Opportunity Tote in the L size. I love it and I do recommend it, especially if you're looking for something like the Dior Book Tote, but finding it does have some minuses. This bag takes care of all those minuses, including the price. See you in the next video, my lovelies. Bye nada. Mwah.